This is Twit. It's time for Smoke and Solder. And, you know, Gordo, you've been talking about uh, antenna tuners here recently. And, yeah, yeah. And showed us kind of how to tweak them and all that. I thought maybe this week we might talk about how to connect one and a uh, meter or, or whatever else you got. So, Victor, if you'll uh, roll the footage here. Connecting an antenna to your HF station is not that difficult. It mainly depends on your antenna and what extra gear you want to connect. Let's take a look at a few different possibilities. Virtually all HF rigs have a 50 ohm unbalanced connector for the antenna. Ideally, you'd use a 50 ohm unbalanced antenna. However, that's not usually the case. Perhaps the most popular HF antenna around is the half wave dipole. This antenna consists of two equal length quarter wave elements connected in a balanced configuration. Now this will work with 50 ohm coax which is an unbalanced connection if everything is perfect. However, things often aren't perfect. That's why we might consider using a matching device like a balan, which means balance to unbalance. It will connect the 50 ohm unbalanced feed line to a balanced antenna and reduce radiation coming back down the feed line into the shack. Not only will a ballon convert from balanced to unbalanced, it can also be used to transform an impedance. In the case of the halfway dipole though, we would just use a simple one-to-one -one ballon. Whatever the input impedance is, the output impedance would be the same. The ballon would be located at the end of the transmission line right near the antenna feed point. Now some amateurs prefer to use balanced ladder line which is available in 300, 450 or 600 ohms typically. In this case, they'll need a ballon to convert from the 50 ohm output impedance of the transmitter into the higher impedance of the ladder line. Normally, this ballon would be located near the transmitter. Many antenna tuners will come with a built-in ballon for connecting wire line transmission line. For the rest of this segment, we're going to concentrate on 50 ohm coax, which is unbalanced. In a perfect world, your 50 ohm transmitter would feed 50 ohm coax into a 50 ohm antenna. Sometimes it might not be possible to trim your antenna for a perfect 50 ohms. In these cases, we'll need to use an antenna tuner. Ideally, the antenna tuner would be located at the end of the coax cable right at the antenna feed point. Have you ever noticed those boxes that are usually right at the base of an AM antenna? These are called dog houses, and if you looked inside, it would look something like this, an antenna tuner. Since AM broadcast stations only operate on one frequency, they can easily locate their antenna tuning unit right at the base of the tower because they'll basically adjust it once, and that's it. There's no changing. However, with amateur radio, it's often not practical to put the antenna tuning unit right at the base of the antenna, so we'll move it inside the shack near the transmitter. Now, this is a compromise, not the best way to work, but it's what most of us do who are using a tuner. Our transmitter will be perfectly happy operating into a properly tuned antenna tuner that'll present 50 ohms to it. However, there's still going to be some reflected power on the coax, and that's not good, but it's what we live with. This discussion could go on for days, but we're going to stop it here, so we've got time to talk about some of the other items that you might want to put in series with your transmitter and antenna. You might want to use an external watt meter and SWR meter. Naturally, you'd locate this as near to your transmitter as you could, so that you're seeing the same reflected power that your transmitter sees. Now suppose you wanted to use a tuner and a watt meter. Where would you position those? Well, the watt meter is the first thing after the transmitter because we're still interested in the reflected power that the transmitter is seeing. Now let's suppose we want to use a linear amplifier and a tuner. How would you connect those? The linear amplifier is the first thing after the transmitter and then the tuner is on the output of the amplifier because we're interested in matching that antenna to the output impedance of the amplifier. 
Now, what if we wanted to add a meter to the mix? Where would it go? It would go right at the output of the linear amplifier and before the tuner, because we're interested in seeing the reflected power that the linear app is seeing. So there you go, a basic discussion of how things connect in your transmission line. Now, you can end up with some different cases and different gear, but typically this is how you do it. I thought it was about time maybe we talk about how you'd connect all those things together. You know, if you're sitting there with several objects like that in uh, coax, it, it can get a little confusing if you don't really reason it out good. But the meter always goes right after whatever the output stage is, whether it's your transmitter or if you've got a linear amplifier. And then the tuner goes past all of that. 